Well, it's so good to see you all this morning. Believe it or not, uh, Sunday, this Sunday is the last Sunday of July. Are you ready to have August? Oh, I'm ready because Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. Um, I invite you to open your hearts and mind. Enjoy this worship service because God is here with us and for us. Today is another special Sunday because uh, we are going to have a special uh, preacher today. Is one of our own member, Ms. Jen Shaber, is going to preach about message and um, inspired by the Disney movie Moana. So it's wonderful and get ready to hear a wonderful message. With that note, would you please rise? Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Wait for the Lord like those who hope in God's mercy. God's steadfast love endures forever. Watch for God like those who eagerly await the morning. Wait for God who power redeems us. Hear God's hopeful word like those who long for pardon. talk a little bit about friendship and kindness and how it relates to Moana. I have some questions though at the very beginning of which character you like more. So we're going to take a couple votes, okay? So which character do you like more? Maui or Moana? Who wants to raise their hand for Moana? Who likes Moana more? Who likes Maui more? <laughs> Maui! Okay, okay. Who likes, this one's a little bit harder, the chief so Moana's dad or Moana's grandma? Grandma Tala. So who's voting for the chief, her dad? Okay, and who's voting for the grandma? Okay, okay. Um, one more. What about Hey Hey the rooster versus the crab? Tamatoa. So who's voting for the crab? And who's voting for Hey Hey? I know somebody up here used to have a hey, hey shirt, so. So, a couple more questions for you guys. Was Maui nice to Moana when he first met her? No. No, what did he do? He took the boat. He took the boat, and did he put her in a cave? He did. Yeah. Yeah, I think there, there might have been somebody there. So, did they eventually grow and have a really cool friendship? And they, that was like the whole second half of the movie, right? He got the hook. And he got the hook, right? With Tamatoa, right? And they worked together. So was Maui reluctant to help Moana at the beginning? No. Yeah, he was, right? He didn't want to help her. But then together, with their friendship, they did really well, right? Yeah. So sometimes it can be really hard to do things on our own, but if we do things with our friends, Sometimes that makes it easier, right? Yeah. That's, pr that's pretty special, right? 
The other friendship that I want to talk to you guys about is Grandma Tally. I think she and Moana have a very, very special relationship, right? Because they talk to each other, and Grandma Tally kind of advised or told her about the ways of the world. And she's magical. And she's magical. Yep, she does have some magical stuff that she does. You're right. You know Moana pretty well. <laughs> so what I want you guys to think about, it, and Miss Jen's going to talk about kindness, right? Because at the very end of the book, what happens? What happens at the end of the movie? Yes, Moana restores the heart of Tahiti with, with kindness, right? So Taka's really scary. Look, at, look how scary Taka is in this picture. <laughs> He's really scary with fire, right? Yeah. But Moana gives kindness, right? So we can sometimes be really kind even though our brother or our sister might feel like they're Taka, right? Yeah. But if we're kind to them, maybe they'll turn into Tahiti, right? The heart of Tahiti, the heart of right? So I want you guys to remember to that kindness always is going to be helpful, and that doing things with friends is really helpful, and also listening to other people that might have good ideas is really helpful. All right, guys, can you pray with me? Yes. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for giving us friends. Thank you for giving us special advisors like Grandma Tally. Help us to be kind and show kindness even when it's really, really, really hard. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let us have time. Uh, just gather our minds and hearts and remember those who are dear to us and lift all our prayers together as God's people. Let us pray together. Holy God, we come before you in prayer, lifting to you the joys and concerns and the hopes and dreams of our lives. May we also be open to your voice in our lives, that we may see with new eyes and hear with new ears and the direction you will have us to go. Bless we, as we pray this gathering of your people, that we may grow and flourish in your love and grace for the purpose to which you have called us. We seek to stay in love with you, O oh God, without you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do everything. Hear our prayers for those whose lives have touched us, those who are in pain, those who are ill, those who grieve. May we touch their lives not only through our prayers, but through our lives and actions as well. So guide us, bless us, uplift us, and hold us, for we are your children, call to our purpose in your world. Hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts. We pray in the name that is above every name that is our Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as a children of God, may we recite the Lord's prayer in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us to say our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
if you're able, would you please rise and do the passing of the peace of Christ with one another? Let's greet one another. for today have been taken from Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 and Revelation chapters 21 verses 1 through 6 and 22 verses 12 through 17. First this, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. A reading from Revelation. I saw heaven and earth new created. Gone the first heaven, gone the first earth, gone the sea. I saw holy Jerusalem, new created, descending resplendent out of heaven, as ready for God, as a bride for her husband. I heard a voice thunder from the throne. Look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood, making his home with men and women. They're his people, he's their God. He'll wipe every tear from their eyes, Death is gone for good, tears gone, crying gone, pain gone, all the first order of things gone. The enthroned continues, look, I'm making everything new, write it all down, each word dependable and accurate. Then he said, it's happened, I'm A to Z, I'm the beginning, I'm the conclusion. From water, of life, well I drink freely to the thirsty. Is anyone thirsty? Come. All who will come and drink. Drink freely of the water of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. This morning we're going to explore the parallels between the overarching story of the Bible and the movie Moana. Believe it or not, Moana crystallizes in a simple and Disney at its best way many of the high points in the story arc of the Bible. Although Moana is from the fictional island Multanui 3,000 years ago, the story and culture of Moana is based actually on the very real heritage and history of Polynesian islands such as Hawaii, Samoa, Tonga, and Tahiti. The story of God and humanity and our search for answers on both the beauty and the brokenness we see all around us really is universal. It weaves into all of our stories and helps show us how much we all have in common. The benefit of a Disney movie is that they also usually top out at an hour and a half to two hours, <laughs> allowing you to see and appreciate that full story arc. We often in church life, whether in worship, a devotion, or a class, Look, usually look at individual stories in the Bible, or maybe even a whole book in the Bible. But we don't often take a step back and look at the full sweeping story of the Bible from start to finish. Even those of us who did Bible in a year, or more than a year in my case, took a whole year to get through the whole Bible. While the details of individual passages are very important, they can sometimes distract us from really feeling and experiencing the bigger picture and trajectory of the Bible as a whole. We are going to look at this overarching story and these three themes that tie so closely between Moana and the Bible. Creation and things gone wrong, 
people, being a people of action and change, and the restoration of creation. I hope that talking through the story of Moana and its parallels to the Bible will help us step back and look at that big picture. Moana is set in the Polynesian islands and starts with the wise Grandma Tala, teaching a full class of toddlers and preschoolers their culture's creation story. Let's listen to what Grandma Tala was teaching and try and pick up on any similarities to the creation story in our Bible. In the beginning, there was only ocean under the mother until the mother island emerged, Tefiti. Her heart held the greatest power ever known. It could create life itself, and Tefiti shared it with the world. But in time, some began to seek Tefiti's heart. They believed that they could possess it. The great power of creation would be theirs. And one day, the most daring of them all voyaged across the vast ocean to take Tefiti's heart. He was a demigod of the wind and sea. He was a warrior, a trickster, a shapeshifter who could change with the power of his magical fish hook. And his name was Maui. But without her heart, Tefiti began to crumble. It's a pretty incredible story. What did you hear in the story that reminded you of the creation story in our Bible? In the beginning, there was only ocean. Sounds a lot like our first scripture passage this morning. First this, God created the heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness and inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. Similar to Moana, the Genesis story goes on to teach of the beauty of creation and the Garden of Eden. But unfortunately, both the Garden of Eden and Tefiti are in a world with people who miss the mark of who God wants them to be. Selfishness and that hunger for power break creation and the kingdom of heaven from how it should be. Maui in his quest for power is upsetting the balance of creation and trying to take control for himself. How often are we like Maui or Adam and Eve and make choices and decisions that are selfish or are trying to take power for ourselves? We can't always see the immediate impact of those choices in our everyday lives. Watching the movie Moana and the story of Maui and the heart of Tefiti play out in two hours helps us see in real time the impact of these choices. The impact of Maui taking Tefiti's heart begins to take its toll on the people and creation. Here we are introduced to Moana, a wise and curious girl who is daughter to the leaders of their Polynesian island. As Moana grows, she learns the story of her people and observes deterioration happening in her environment around her. Throughout the story, Moana's grandma Tala and the stories she teaches, and really the water itself, act as sort of a Holy Spirit, if you will, helping Moana discern and hear her call to leave her island and return the heart of Tefiti and restore creation. But Moana's parents and many of the islanders are afraid of the seas outside of their harbor. Uh, are afraid of the, outside, the seas that are outside of the harbor of their little island that's protected, and don't want to disrupt the status quo of their island. While their island is getting sicker, it's a known quantity for them. They have an idea of what to expect. The island of, islanders of Multanui are really, they're missing the mark out of fear and preservation. They were too scared to step out into what, who, what and who they were being called to be, to save their island and creation. Moana met resistance at home to her mission, just as Jesus in the Gospels and the apostles in the book of Acts met resistance at home. Moana, Jesus, and the apostles all remind us that we are not primarily custodians of an island or an institution. We are people on a mission, people with a great commission. We need not let fear of the unknown or protection of the status quo prevent us from actively working to live out our mission as people of faith. We like stability, consistency, and comfort, but often to live out our faith, our feet need to get moving. The song we sang this morning, We Are Marching in the Light of God, is a protest march song against apartheid from South Africa. It is a call for freedom and solidarity with those who are, that are oppressed. It is literally a song about moving your feet in a protest march, a song of action and movement. 
we often lose sight of the history in the book of Acts of risk and mission and faith and adventure on the move, which are at the heart of our identity. Moana does ultimately sail off into the seas with confidence in herself to save her island. Author Cindy Wang Brandt says, it was only when Moana found wholeness for herself that she was able to love others with courage and trust. Life begets life. A robust sense of self and identity isn't selfish. It is the truest way to become the most selfless person. We'll watch now Moana setting off on her journey in How Far I'll Go. The movie continues with Moana meeting the demigod Maui that Nicholas was talking about in the children's sermon, who had stolen the heart of Tefiti, and they set off on a musical and wild seafaring adventure. If you haven't seen the movie Moana, I highly do recommend it. It's hilarious. Eventually, after much back and forth and a lot of classic Disney hilarity, Moana and Maui join forces and embark to restore the heart of Tefiti. Watch now as Moana restores the heart of Tefiti. How does Moana approach restoring the heart of Tefiti and the brokenness of her world? Does she come in blazing and cowboy fashion? No, she comes in with a gentle song, reminding us all that despite our brokenness and past, that we can be redeemed. Restoring the heart of Tefiti restores the covenant that Maui broke with creation through his selfishness and his thirst for power. How Moana restores the heart of Tefiti is an example of a different type of leadership. I would argue a Christ-like type of leadership. We can't all be Moana and restore the heart of Tefiti and single-handedly set all of creation in the world right. But what if we each lived out our call as fiercely as Moana and the first Christians in the book of Acts did? We could bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth today and experience resurrection and a new earth here and now. Our scripture passage today were from the first chapter of the Bible and the last chapters of the Bible. We started with a Polynesian creation story and the creation story in the book of Genesis. And we end with a new earth for the people of Motunui and a new earth as described in the book of Revelation. The end of Revelation says, I saw heaven and earth new created. Go on the first heaven gone the first earth, gone the sea. I saw holy Jerusalem new created, descending resplendent out of heaven, as ready for God as a bride for her husband. I heard a voice of thunder from the throne. Look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood, making his home with men and women. They're his people. He's their God. He'll wipe every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Tears gone, crying gone, pain gone all the first order of things gone. The enthroned continues, look, I am making everything new. Write it all down, each word dependable and accurate. Then he said, it's happened. I'm A to Z. I'm the beginning. I'm the conclusion. From water of life well, I give freely to the thirsty. Is anyone thirsty? Come, all who will, come and drink. Drink freely of the water of life. May we take time to step back and reflect on the full, wide, beautiful story of the Bible start to finish. May we never forget where our story leads and what is called of us to get there. May we live out our call with the same confidence and leadership as Moana did. If we do, we just might bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth and restore creation.
sheltered by tree and flower there in my quiet hours with him my cares are left behind whether a garden small or on a mountain From this quiet place, I go prepared to face a new day with love for all mankind. to face a new day with love for all mankind for all mankind you can give it in the plate in the back or online. In a spirit of prayer, please join me in the offertory prayer. We sing your praises, O God, for your love is sure and true. Your faithfulness is never ending. You satisfy the thirsty and fill the hungry with good things. Receive the offerings we bring before you this day. That these gifts make it to your work of tending providing hope for the oppressed and blessing those who want to walk. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. There are a few um, announcements that I'd like to make. Vacation Bible School is starting when? Monday, that is a tomorrow. We can't wait. We can't wait. So we thank our fearless leader, Miss Veronica, and she done a really amazing work. So let me just give her <laughs> more. All right. And we have uh, many volunteers and server leaders are ready to help her and help our kids tomorrow. So please continue to keep us in your prayer. So as we usually do, what we do, do we do after worship service? What we do, we move the chair, right, Miss Veronica? All the way back. But please, we have a two book stand over there. We are going to be like a Methodist. We have to do like very methodical things. Remove all the hymns and put it over there. It's easier to move chairs and then move the chairs and stack them in the, in the back, okay? Can you all help us? Yes, I know, Andrew and Matthew, you guys are going to help, but please help us. So Vacation Bible School is this week. Thank you, Ms. Veronica, and thank you, all volunteers, and thank you. The children are coming to learn the love of God, so thank you again. All right, backpack collections supporting uh, the Martin Luther King Youth Center in our community, so starting uh, August 7th, so pr practically the August month of August, so please, sponsored by Lydia Circle, so please bring backpack, and you can buy anywhere you want, and bring it, and a collection box is in the mission closet in front of pastors of office, so we appreciate your help. An outdoor worship service, the date has changed, now is August 21st, it's the third Sunday of August, we'll have the wonderful outdoor service. And uh, we will have August 14 is our Youth Mission Celebration Sunday. So entire service, really, uh, is we are celebrate missions 
uh, youth summer mission that we just had to serve uh, Philadelphia through Philadelphia Project. So our youth will come and youth advisors will come and share their most wonderful experiences. And then after that, as I uh, made announcement last, year, uh, last week too, we are going to have a farewell reception for our beloved member, Dave Rogers. Um, so we ask you to just stay after worship service and spend some time with Dave Rogers. Dave Rogers is moving back to Indiana, but he's going to stay with us for the time being. And then he's going to visit us from time to time. And let's have a great worship service. Next Sunday, we are going to begin, um, start a new worship series called God on Broadway. So we are going to talk, you know, going through some of the, some of the Broadway shows that we love. So first Sunday is Aladdin. How many, how many of you watched Aladdin Broadway show? Yay! We're going to talk about that. And then third, Miss Mary Beth, what is going to be? Dear Evan Hansen. And then the fourth week, Don Schultz. Come from away. So wait and wait and just come and enjoy the worship service. I also appreciate our preachers this uh, July. Today, Ms. Jen Shaver, thank you so much for a wonderful message. And uh, Mr. Doug Parvin for uh, the, your uh, service in the third Sunday of July. Remember the, the movie? Total, right? And it's a wonderful story about the dogs and owners and relationships. So thank you. And we had a wonderful month of July, so can't wait to move on. And the next month, have another great uh, month in summer and just, you know, continue to uh, worship God together in truth and spirit. So with that note, would you please rise? And we're going to sing, There's a Spirit of Love in This Place. have reason to doubt, hope where you have cause to despair, go with God's blessing. Si a humble 